Today at NTD Racing, we're talking all about the Langmar Systems Crossfire Pro CNC Plasma Cutting Table. So I've owned the Crossfire Pro for about a year now, and during that time, I've made a couple of videos about me using the table to make all kinds of different things. And I keep seeing the same questions that come up over and over again. So today's video, I'm gonna to try to answer those questions, which might help you, especially if you're trying to add one of these to your own shop. One quick request, if you like what you're seeing today, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button uh, below, and then also ringing the bell to get notification of future episodes. I have a lot of videos, uh, a couple just of the Langmar Systems Crossfire Pro and setting that thing up. And then just about all of my videos have me using this table as I make different parts for either Honcho, our off-road race truck, or Bob, our overlanding rig. Let's go ahead and start with a quick walk around of my Crossfire Pro. And then let's jump into the Langmar Systems webpage and look at the order form for the Crossfire Pro and maybe answer some of the questions that I wish I had asked a year ago. All right, so obviously the uh, the honeymoon is over on this table. You can kind of see on the rails just some of the uh, the carnage that goes on as you continue using uh, this table. And I've seen others that are much worse. Uh, the way that I clean this, you can check out one of my videos. I think it's the second one I made, and I show you exactly how I use the bucket head and a couple Home Depot buckets to clear this thing out. Uh, as far as the rails go on this, uh, the guide rails, I just use some WD-40 and a rag to wipe those down. And then on the lead screws, I'm just using gear oil to uh, keep those clean. Besides that, I just try to wipe everything else down to keep it as clean as I possibly can, but it does get uh, dirty. Um, the table's been holding up great. I use, as I, when I glued this together and put together the, the joint of the table, I use the RTV sealant. I have had no leaks. The only place I sometimes get a drip leak is from these little plugs uh, right through here. You can see the top of it. If I go down here to the bottom, sometimes I'll get some water dripping through uh, those. And if you look at this one over here, you can actually see a water drop on the bottom. I generally will keep, if I have water that stays in here more than a day, I will put one of my Home Depot buckets right underneath there and just kind of catch the water. Here is my solution to the computer stand. I thought this was a good deal. I got it from Home Depot. Unfortunately, I can't find it anymore. At the time I got this one for $69. I've had people ask me about it, but I can't find it. But it does a great job. It has a power strip on the side where I pull all the power uh, from, and then it just keeps my tools organized. So here is my solution for how I'm gonna mount my razor weld. I just basically made a mount to the back of my cabinet there and it holds it there with the torch I control and everything in one place. A topic that often comes up on Facebook is compressors and air dryers. Please check out my last video on how I put together my DeWalt single stage compressor with the Harbor Freight. Uh, air dryer these things work great together i wasn't initially a fan of the casters that i had on here but after a year they've been working great you'll find the uh inserts which are mcmaster car in the description below you'll find the casters on our ntd racing website let's first just talk about the reality of owning this table and how much it really costs two thousand four hundred ninety five dollars is what they have on their page uh and this is what I've got. So these are the prices. This is how much it costs to have this table in my shop right now. Uh, $400 for the torch I control. You got the razor weld. Shipping costs $175, which I think is reasonable for the size of this, uh, this table. I live in California. I pay a lot of money for taxes. But at the, the bottom line is for $4,258.59, that table is sitting in my garage and doing work. I invite you to go compare that to anybody else who's making a table with all this capability. You're just not going to touch this for even double the price. So let's just go right down the list. Starting out with the water table, it is built into the system and it just works great. And it's uh, so cool that it is included. So the size of this table is 48 inches wide by 33 inches long. And you can probably do most of your cuts just in that cut size, but you might be saying to yourself, I kind of need to cut some bigger things at times. I invite you to go over to my playlist and check out my video on index cutting where I show you what I did to cut trailing arms that were 60 inches long on this table. The fire control uh, is a great product that just keeps getting better. They uh initially some of the problems that i was having with my crossfire pro i was getting what i thought was misfires i couldn't figure out why my table wasn't you know, why my torch wasn't working and, and it was just freezing up and what i found out it was the fire control uh, in the older versions it was running taking so much of my cpu to run that it was just kind of basically crashing the computer and so what I ended up having to do is I would always restart my computer to make it work. And then now with the version 20.6 that you can download for free once you have the table, 
it works perfect. In the last cuts I did, I had all kinds of programs opened up, ran fire control, no longer restart my computer, and it just runs perfectly. All right, the next decision point here is Fusion 360 or Sheet Cam for computer-aided manufacturing. Uh, and I went with Fusion 360. I know that Sheet, Sheet Cam, a lot of guys talk about it. They have great success with it, and that is awesome. But I was the guy, I'm like, man, I don't have a lot of shillings. Just tell me what works. What do I need for the least amount of money that's going to work? Fusion 360 works great. It's a little bit of a misnomer that it's for free from a Langmar system. It's actually for free from Autodesk for personal use. You can get uh, Fusion 360 for one full year as long as you meet some of their parameters. And after that year, you can go right back in and set up your subscription again for a year of free use. I just got done doing it and it totally works. How well does Fusion 360 works? work? After using it for a while and overcoming the learning curve, I find that it's very easy. I am making right now two videos. The first one will be me using Fusion 360 to make things in two dimensions and then running all the way through the CAM program and getting it onto the Crossfire Pro. I'm gonna follow that up with me using Fusion 360 to make three dimension uh, items like my suspension for my race truck and then how I take those parts, break them up, flatten them down onto a computer sheet, if you will, and then put those into the Crossfire Pro and cut those out. And now you can see that without spending any more money than you have to, you can make the Crossfire Pro work and do everything you want it to. Torch height control for $400 is a total no-brainer. It is the best deal you're gonna find anywhere in the market for a torch height control, especially one that works as well as this. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of the videos. I'm gonna show you me cutting with torch height control on and torch height control off and show you what you're getting. All right, let's take a closer look at the Z axis of the Crossfire Pro so you can get a little better idea of how the magic happens here. Uh, before I show you how this happens in real time with a cut, let me just show you some of the mechanics that are going on here. I'm just using a regular old hand torch which is mounted in here. You got a lead screw which basically makes the hand torch go up and down on this uh, vertical gantry, if you will. Um, and what I can do is I can reach my hand in here and if you can see without that lead screw moving I can lift and lower the torch and what's going to happen is a lead screw is going to be commanded by the computer to make the torch go down. The torch will eventually go down so far that it hits the metal and basically pushes that that whole slider up and then there's a squat switch which is connected to these wires. That squat switch will send a signal down these wires telling the computer hey I just touched the metal. I'm on the metal right now. And that is where the initial height sensing magic will start. I'm going to talk about what's going on with initial height sensing, but let's watch it in its entirety and then go back and break it down into its individual elements. Let's watch that one more time and talk about the steps so you can appreciate the value of the initial height sensing. So the first thing that we see happening is that the computer says, okay, start the program or start this cut portion. And it's going to tell the z-axis to drive the torch all the way down to the metal and then trip that squat switch we were talking about and that's going to feed back to the computer saying okay now the torch is actually on the metal so now that the torch is on the metal it can zero itself out and then go to the fusion 360 values or the sheet cam values that you put in there for the pierce height and now it's going to raise itself up to that pierce height in this case 0.15 inches All right, now that it's here, it's ready to fire the torch. At that point, it's gonna delay for one half of a second and then drop down to your cut height, in this case, 0 0.063 inches, and then it's off to the races for the rest of the cut. Okay, this will be a good time for me to try to explain what the torch height control is doing. As soon as it fires a torch and it drops down to that cut height of 0 0.063 in this case, it's gonna take a voltage reading and remember that voltage. And then as it continues across the cut, if the voltage changes, it's telling the computer that it's either going away from the metal or it's getting too close to the metal and it needs to change the height of the torch in relation to the metal to get back to that voltage reading. And that's the way that it keeps that same cut height all the way across the cut, even if the metal is bent or if the surface isn't completely level. 
So I did that first cut with the torch height control on. In this cut, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna turn the torch height control off and show you that the initial height sensing is good enough in some cases to cut and do just a, a perfect job. And the cases that that is, is when you're gonna pierce and you're gonna cut, and I think it's gonna stay mostly local. It, I mean, you're gonna cut within about a five to six inch uh, range, depending really on the thickness of the metal. The thicker, probably the wider out you can go because the metal's not gonna warp or, or change a whole bunch. And it's gotta be totally flat to make this work. And in this case, it's totally flat. And the piece that I cut is pretty good. And you'll see that the cut quality between the torch height control, which is this one right here, and then the one where I turn torch height control off and I just go with initial height sensing, the quality is pretty much the same because again, it, the torch height was pretty much consistent the whole time. Let's look at a different circumstance. Now I'm cutting like the worst situation. This is a round tube that I'm cutting and it's on an angle. And this is where the torch height control shows its value because now it adjusts itself while it's doing that whole cut and it makes a perfect circle in this piece of exhaust tubing that is sitting at an angle in my water table. You can't do that with initial height sensing by itself. Okay, let's talk about plasma cutters. You'll find that most of the discussion is between either getting the Razor Weld 45 or the Hypertherm 45 XP. I couldn't overlook personally the fact that I could buy three of the Razor Weld 45s for the price of one hypertherm with a machine torch. So I went with the razor weld. Let's talk about the good and the bad. The razor weld is a direct connection. It's basically plug and play and it is designed to be used with the Crossfire Pro. I think the cut quality is amazing. I've compared my cuts to the cuts I've seen online of people using the hypertherm and I think the quality is right there. And oh, by the way, we use the same consumables in our torch that's using the hypertherm. Let me be totally upfront with the negatives of the razor weld because you could be one of those people that goes and buys one of these and then has problems with the razor weld. The problem that everybody hates is misfires. And what I thought was a problem initially with the razor weld turned out to be a problem with the fire control where the whole system would freeze up. And that was really a problem with my computer and the fire control and that has been fixed in the 20.6 and now it works just perfect. The other problem is misfires that some people are getting when they're using brand new consumables in the torch. This problem has been addressed at Langmeyer Systems and they have sent out a fix in the event that you are one of those people that are having that problem. I plan on doing that fix and I'm going to show you that in a future episode. The bottom line to me is that the Razor Weld 45 is a really good machine and it is the best option to get you in at a low price point with really easy setup and great cut quality. If you're in the market for one of these tables, then hopefully I've made that decision a little bit more easy. You can find a link for the Langmeyer Systems Crossfire Pro in my description below, or also by going to ntdracing.com and clicking on store. All right, one last plug to hit the like and subscribe button below and ring the bell for future notifications. We got a lot of really cool stuff coming up this year for NTD Racing. We got Honcho, which is our race truck. We're gonna be doing all kinds of content as we test that truck and then take it to Vegas to Reno and then also the Baja 1000. We got Bob, our overlanding rig. We just finished up the whole video series on how we built that, especially using this table for a lot of parts uh, on that. And then we got a couple more videos coming up for the Langmar Systems Crossfire Pro. And we'll see you on those videos. Take care of yourself.